All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My name is Hannah Kripo. I'm the content marketing manager here at Certiport. We're so happy to have you joining us for our first Unity Academy webinar. Now, please note that this presentation is being recorded. So everyone who has registered for the session will receive a link to the recording after our presentation is wrapped this afternoon. Uh, if you have any questions, I will enable the chat here shortly. So you can drop in, let us know where you're joining from. And if you have any questions for our presenters as we're going through our content today, feel free to drop those into the chat or the Q&A as well. Now, today we're going to be talking about all things Unity, and we're so excited about our incredible presenters that are here with us. Our first presenter is Alex Grady. Alex is a senior program manager at Unity Technologies, working with educators and schools to prepare students for high demand jobs in real-time 3D development. At Unity, he develops solutions that help schools quickly start and expand real-time 3D programs and support faculty to learn and teach Unity. Alex also co-chairs the AR and VR Association's Education Committee. Our second presenter is Ty Palmer. Ty is the product manager over the Unity Certified User Certification Program here at Certiport. He completed his Master's of Business Administration at Western Governors University and is also a project management professional. Ty also has experience designing and testing VR simulations used in education. And our third and final presenter is David Manning. David is an educator with over a decade of classroom experience. He has been the Game and Simulation Academy Director for Volusia County Schools for the last eight years. In that role, he has created a curriculum that is used with students in grades 9 through 12 to prepare them for future careers in the game industry and related fields. So we are very excited to have these incredible presenters here with us today. So without further ado, Alex, I'll let you kick us off. And I'll go ahead and stop share so that you can show your presentation. Great. Thanks so much, Hannah. Um, and really excited uh, to be able to share with everyone today. Um, I'm joining you all. I'm usually based in Austin, Texas, but I'm joining you all from New Zealand at the moment. Um, I'm back here for a couple of months and that's my hometown um, based on the accent. I've been working at Unity for about two and a half years now. Um, I come from an ed education background as an educator myself, working in um, technology and um, professional development. Uh, and like my intro said at Unity, I support schools now working with educators, um, administrators, students to um, help bring them, um, you know, understand the power of Unity technology um, and support bringing new programs in or updating existing programs um, and keeping people on the bleeding edge of this exciting technology. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, context about who Unity is, what we do, um, what the tools are, uh, and I know we've got some time at the end for Q&A as well, which I'd be happy to answer any more questions or if there's anything I don't know, I can um, connect you with someone that does. So at Unity, we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it. The philosophy is centered around um, serving creators uh, and it's the beating heart of our company. Unity is the world's leading platform for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. Our platform provides a comprehensive set of software solutions to create and operate interactive real-time 2D and 3D content for mobile phones, tablets, PCs, consoles, and augmented and virtual reality devices. I um, always like to sort of set context when I talk to people about Unity and what we do um, in sort of the historical context of where we find ourselves in terms of the technological, technological revolutions that we've been living through. Um, and I think it's also really interesting to kind of zoom out and see how far we've come and how exciting a time it is to live in. And more importantly, to be involved with education and, and upskilling students for kind of these exciting opportunities of the future. So, uh, over time, we've experienced several industrial revolutions, um, starting with the advent of the steam engine in the 18th century, which allowed for the production um, uh, production to be mechanized for the first time. That was a huge driver of social change as people sort of increasingly moved to city centers, education changed, more people were able to become educated. Um, in the second industrial revolution, electricity and other scientific advancement, advancements led to mass production. We saw a third industrial revolution beginning in the, in the 50s with uh, computers and digital technologies 
this led to increasing automation and manufacturing and the disruption of industries, including things like banking and energy and communications, really importantly. It's widely suggested now that we're living through a fourth industrial revolution, um, at the start of fourth industrial revolution. Um, I'm sure you've been uh, wowed. I, I don't know if you've been um, keeping up with some of these AI advances recently, but um, I guess one of the most exciting things in the last week is is, uh, is practicing, practicing this new sort of Google search. Uh, I feel like my job has completely changed being able to um, use the chat GPT AI tool. Um, but things like AI, machine learning, extended reality, AR, VR, cyber physical systems, the Internet of Things, blockchain, all of these things are kind of converging to um, make us uh, as a species more connected than ever. Um, we saw the connected revolution grow with the first version of the internet, which utilized text. Um, we moved to a social networking and mobile version of this. And now we're kind of quickly moving towards what's considered to be a third version of the internet, um, or a lot of people referring to as web three, um, which is becoming more spatial. Uh, I think excitingly for students that are thinking about technologies like Unity or tools like Unity, the future of the web is spatial. Folks are going to be wanting to um, take content in a 3D manner. Um, we're going to be more, things are going to be more pers persistent and we're going to be more connected than ever. So the opportunity for students with these skills um, who understand these tools and the technologies underlying the growth in this change towards this new industrial revolution uh, are going to be huge. Uh, and I think we have a responsibility as educators to support students and make sure that they find fruitful, well-paid careers. Unity is leading the way to this future in terms of the spatial um, spatial version of the internet. Um, mobile games, where we started, Unity is a mobile as, as a game engine. Mobile games, um, where we have the most uh, you know, most Unity developers will be working in mobile games or games in general. Um, these are some of the most technically challenging forms of media to create from a technical and engineering standpoint. They're complicated to build. Um, games are mostly 3D and they're real time and they're interactive. So what does real time 3D mean? Well, 3D means that unlike in a movie, a character or object is fully 3D, meaning that we don't only see the front or the, the screen um, of that. We see the character, we can move around and view the character from either side. Um, real time means that in the next frame a player sees or a user sees, uh, it's created in an instant. So a 30th of a second for many mobile games, 120th of a second for some virtual reality platforms. In other media like TV or on the web, things are fixed and unchanging. Um, you can uh, rewind or go forward, but uh, you don't change the content as you go. Interactive means that games change in response to the input of players. So what button I push um, influences what happens in the next second. This content is dynamic and responsive and Unity is the leading platform for creating and operating this type of media. Uh, here are some just interesting statistics based on um, uh, you know, about Unity and uh, where we see uh, a lot of growth. So, you know, we power 71% of um, the top thousand mobile games. All of the new mobile games are powered, 50% uh, of all new mobile games are powered by Unity. Um, I think this is slightly old. I know that um, probably higher than 60% at the moment of AR and VR content is powered, created on Unity. Um, and there are a lot of users um, and a huge community. Uh, uh, one reason why um, a lot of folk love beginning to, uh, beginning with Unity, and I know this is probably something that David um, and uh, folk will talk to a bit more, is about the community and having the support uh, for students getting started or educators getting started, knowing where to go, having advice um, from folk who, who have done it before. So with Unity, you can build an application once and that ap application works across more than 20 platforms. So instead of mastering and porting content to each of these platforms individually, developers can focus on creating one great thing and then having multiple paths to success with those things. Um, and it's not just games anymore. So Unity is more by the day growing into other industries and 
students with the skills or understand, you know, either beginning with game development or simulation or virtual reality, augmented reality, can apply those skills to different app, um, applications and to different industries. So I'll, I'll just share with you a, um, a great little video on the kind of industries that are using Unity. Can you hear that audio? Is that coming through? Yeah. Yeah, it's coming through. In Unity, you can do anything. In Unity, I can choose who I want to be. With Unity, I can have a small size team, but deliver on AAA quality. It's pretty groundbreaking. Let's so just put it that way. Whether or not that's film or games, construction or automotive, this creative medium is available to everyone. So what's the real-time engine? In factual terms, it is a piece of software, but it's so much more than that. Unity's real-time 3D is an environment built to build video games, but these other industries are getting on board. What Unity provides is a way that people from different disciplines communicate. Designers and artists and coders collaborate on the design together. Unity is the bridge. That's how I see it. In game development, it solves a lot of problems so you don't have to. It's not just an editor engine company. It's giving the developers the tools to get our games in front of as many people around the globe as possible and make something that's really, really successful. What is unique about Unity is we want to help developers build long-term relationship with players and generate revenue. Our vision is building successful businesses for our creators. Whether you're one person and an indie developer or you're part of a large team where you have a hundred different peers working on one Unity game. You're all being powered by the same technology. Giving you this extra boost, this extra leg up to make our lives easier, but also to make the game better. Unity is drastically changing the automotive industry. Using Unity as a glue, we can cover the whole life cycle of production processes. Design, ergonomics, safety, machine learning, training. Hey, can we actually test how rain will look and the wipers performance? To add the moose in front of the car and see how it will react. And everything was super fast because we were running Unity from the back seats. In the construction field, we use Unity for everything and then some. With augmented reality, we can overlay the entire building in front of the developer. We can feel that space with this dynamic environment that we can walk through, select your wood grain, oak versus cherry, add lighting. Our team can update the site, the project, the model instantaneously. We can change how buildings are built. We built all the tools of cinematography, staging and blocking and lighting and performance, and we built them into virtual reality. There's nothing that could get in the way of the filmmaker's desire to just work in real time, to work from instinct. Interactive animation has to be immediate for you to truly believe it's real. And that's why we've used Unity for that. This is the moment. This is the future of animation. Architecture. The automotive industry. Game development. The next great filmmaker is a child who has these tools in their hands. Even if you're one person, if you've got a great idea, you now have the technology to realize that. Creators are the pace setters, the dreamers, those with an imagination. And we are here to support that because we think the world's a fundamentally better place with more creators in it. So um, before I pass it over, I just wanted to share some of the kind of exciting um, growth that we're seeing for students in particular and the, uh, the roles um, that are kind of exploding um, at the moment. Uh, so recent, um, a recent study by uh, Burning Glass showed that Unity skills, roles that utilize Unity skills, and obviously we can see that those are um, much broader than just game development, uh, growing 62 um, times faster than the job market overall. Um, huge demand for AR, VR growth as folks moving into that area and uh, gaming is, is, is growing more and more. Um, also, Unity skills uh, translate to lucrative job roles, um, higher salaries, um, much sought after at the moment, um, and lack of uh, talent uh, in the market at the moment. So, you know, in San Francisco, um, the, the same report showed that XR developers are making an average of 150K 
a year and um, also 82,000 pounds in London on average, which is really exciting. Um, and, you know, makes a great business case to any, um, uh, you know, uh, leadership at schools um, for kind of bringing these tools in um, and, and bringing in whether it's a game development program um, or, uh, you know, into architecture, engineering, construction, um, all these other types of areas. Um, I know that we have another um, session in which I'm going to dive into a little bit more of the free. I'm going to make these um, these slides available to you. So I know we have uh, another session diving into the kind of resources that we have to support schools, whether you are trying to start Unity for the first time or improving programs or bringing certification in for the first time. I've been doing a bit of a deeper dive on uh, in a couple of days or uh, tomorrow or a couple of days time. Um, uh, but for now, I just wanted to share uh, a couple of uh, just an idea of where we're seeing Unity used in schools, both um, secondary to um, higher education. Um, so, you know, we're seeing a lot of growth in just outside of outside of strictly game development courses where it sort of started in. Um, a lot of schools are bringing in for computer science at a secondary level. Um, and what we hear from educators, early adopters, uh, is that it's just the most exciting way for students to learn programming, computer science skills, because you know they see their code um, become interactive games straight away um, or interactive experiences, and they can kind of visualize that and bring it to life. I'm sure David will talk a little bit more about how he introduces it to students, um, but. Uh, also, there's so many more opportunities outside of that for schools that have other programs to um, I have students cross curricular to working with other programs, um, you know, making simulations. Um, David, David talked about making actual simulations for learning experiences with the Unity um, to things like, uh, you know, interactive media, um, film, art and design, uh, animation. There's just so many uses for these tools. So, um, yeah lots of exciting opportunities to bring it into schools and programs. Um, I just wanted to finish with a, a quick spotlight, something that was sent to us recently from um, a fantastic partner that we work with, the Urban Arts Partnership in New York. Um, I think hearing from students is actually much better than hearing from someone from a company. Um, and I really like this video because it has students talking about why they really enjoy learning Unity. Um, so Urban Arts Partnership, uh, their mission is to help students explore their creativity. Um, and harness, you know, to defy kind of the odds and the circumstances that a lot of students um, in New York are living through. Um, and since 1991, Urban Arts Partnership has served over 250,000 students, 2,000 teachers across 150 schools. Um, and here's a few things that they have to say about uh, Unity. I love Unity because it's so beginner friendly. There's amazing documentation. They have so many tutorials on their website with example projects. They really want to make sure that anyone who wants to get into video games, regardless of their background, can do it. And that's been especially helpful for me. Thank you, Unity. Thank you, Unity, for giving us the accessible tools to be creative coders. Thank you, Unity, for allowing us to express ourselves how we want. Thank you, Unity, for being a free software that helps people like me create video games on their own. Thank you, Unity. Unity's free and accessible software helped me prepare a portfolio, which ultimately I was able to present in my college applications. Thank you to Unity. Unity is the game engine that I use to program all of my games. Uh, without it, I wouldn't be able to do what I do, and I wouldn't be able to be a game designer. Thank you, Unity. Unity has been an accessible platform for me by allowing me access to its tools to be used for my internship and my portfolio. So yeah, with that, I'm going to pass it back over to Hannah. Um, and yeah, uh, please drop in any questions that you have. Um, I'll try to uh, answer them in the chat, but also in the Q&A at the end. And I'll share my contact details as well, so you can get in touch with me. Thank you, Alex. I'll go ahead and share some slides and type. We will start with you. Sounds good. Thank you, Hannah. And thanks, Alex. It's always fun to see 
um, material from Unity. I love those videos. It, it gets my blood flowing and it's exciting. So um, I'm going to talk about some of the application of how to get started in, in Unity. Um, it's been mentioned already that we'll have other sessions talking about um, free resources and other free and paid resources for certifying students in Unity. Um, but, but on the certification side and not the learning side, I want to talk about um, Unity's certification. So uh, it, the entry level point for students and professionals and anybody to get certified in Unity is the, the user certification. So it's the, the first tier of four currently. Um, the next one is the associate, the professional, and then expert. And they kind of go up in, like it says right there, the high schools for user, post-secondary, higher education for associate, and then more professional level, you know, some on the job experience. So um, Certiport currently sells the user certifications. And in that bundle, we have the programmer, which covers um, Unity kind of basic programming skills, how to use the engine. Um, there's the artist exam, which is creating art assets, which is a really good uh, segue from game design. If, if you have a student who's interested in, you know, maybe Adobe Photoshop or some Autodesk modeling, like it's really, um, applicable in a lot of different fields, specifically the artist exam. And we also have the VR developer exam that, you know, test students on creating a, a simple VR um, experience simulation. Um, like I say, they're, they're very exciting. They're fun. We have course products, certifications, and um, it really sets students apart in a job application process when you have a certification that says Unity's name on it you know, as opposed to, um, you know, someone without it. So that's a little bit of a high level view of what we offer at CertiPort. And if you go to the next slide, Hannah, I'll dive into a little bit more detail on these exams. So the three different exams that we offer at CertiPort are for the user exam. Um, like, I, like I already mentioned, I covered some of this already. It validates the skills in Unity and covers the basics for creating interactive material for AR and VR and even just 3D modeling, it still covers you know, the basics of that as well. Um, it gives people a, a leg up into a really hot industry, like Alex mentioned, with a great growth potential, high salary ranges, um, and kind of leads students down the path to become expert game designers and uh, freelancers or employed you know, at, a, at one of the big companies as well. If you could advance to the next one. So the programmer is our kind of main certification, the user bundle. Um, it does require some C-sharp programming knowledge. There are resources on Unity, both free and paid, to help learn C-sharp programming if students aren't aware. Um, this course dives into some simple programming required. It goes into how to set up uh, a, a Unity asset and put that into like a 3D game simulation. Um, it requires about 150 hours of experience and instruction. That's a really loose term that scares a lot of people sometimes. Um, it, it, like I mentioned, the 150 hours is more of a, a guideline of you could have experience developing a simulation, developing a game. Um, and that counts towards you know, 150 hours and, and the, the courseware as well. Um, the exam is about 40 questions long, 50 minutes. Uh, so it fits in a, a class you know, very well. And the objective domains are four you know, pillars. One is debugging, problem solving, and intercept, interpreting the API. The second is just creating with code, kind of that C-sharp uh, programming knowledge, then evaluating code. And then the fourth is navigating the interface. So that's the programmer exam overview. Um, like I said, there's a lot more I can go into. I'm trying to bite my tongue and not go and, and spoil you know, a future presentation about learning materials available, uh, but this is just the certification for the Unity user certified programmer. And if we go to the artist certification, so this is where students can create an art asset. So it can use um, 2D, 3D artistry, um, things that can be created outside of the platform or in the platform uh, and used in, you know, a, a game, a simulation. And that's where I really feel like it's fun to see for students something to come to life. They create an art asset 
um, they can upload it and kind of see it in a game. And then with a little bit of programming, you can, you know, make that art asset walk around, interact, and, and do all kinds of things. So it's really fun, um, very obtainable for students at a high school level. Again, the 150 hours on here, I don't pay a lot of heed to that. Sometimes there's a requirement, you know, for students to, to spend time in here outside of the courseware. Um, but we put that on there as a blanket statement just to help students know there is some expectation that you are familiar with the program, you've done some work in it, and it's not just, you know, you, you read a book and you take a test and pass it. The, someone with a certification shows competence, um, and that's what we're telling employers. And the last, the last exam that we offer is the VR developer exam. So currently it's a specialization exam that is... Um, required, you're, you're required to take the programmer exam before the VR developer exam. And that is just to show um, someone with a VR developer certification can build an entire VR simulation. So it's really uh, powerful for employers. And so there's some coding required for that, not part of the VR developer exam specifically, but um, you know, is required in the, in the programmer exam that covers that C-sharp material. Um, it's, a, it's not a full length exam at the moment. We're exploring a possibility of changing that and making it a standalone exam. But currently it's 20 questions and you have 30 minutes to complete. And the objective domains are setup of VR, uh, simulation, interaction, and optimization. And if you go to the next slide. So at Certified, sorry, Certified, our conference. So at um, Certiport, we like to promote the full pathway, which is learn, practice, certify. And then there's a fourth one that we don't find here, which is advanced. So um, we offer the full pathway at Certiport, which is starting with the learn. Um, there we sell Unity's created courseware for the certifications that we offer. Um, the courseware has all been mapped to the objective domains of each exam, so it's very relevant. And the practice test also is mapped to the objective domains. Um, I believe those are offered through Geometrics platform, which a lot of teachers have used and, and like. Um, and it simulates the testing environment, so you can do it as a timed mode, you can do it as a, you know, see your answer right away. And... Um, and it can give teachers an overview of where students might be struggling, where to cover a little bit more. Um, and oh, one thing I didn't cover on the on the lesson plans and learning was the learning material also has some teacher friendly resources that helps you cover the content, pace yourself and pace students and kind of um, provide a schedule to go throughout the material. And then the last pillar is the certify, you know, having students certify as a Unity certified user. Um, once they complete that, they receive a certification that has a name on it, has Unity's logo, states when they're certified. Um, and also something cool that we don't talk about a lot, but I wish we did was they're all verifiable. So on our website on Certiport, students can go or employers or teachers can go and look up a certification for a student and it will verify you know, that each student has actually received that credential. So adds a little bit more transparency and weight and honesty, you know, rather than just someone saying they have a certification, it's very verifiable. Um, the other thing that we do is we had you to issue a digital badge through Credly, which is also verifiable. You can go in Credly and search for those credentials as well. Um, but those badges are fun. They're easy to share. They're all over LinkedIn. We encourage students to share that um, on social media, wherever else. And it, it just is a nice thing to have on your on your resume, but also a professional profile like LinkedIn. It just sets you apart from others who may have not certified and and can't um, validate the knowledge that they've they've learned at least with the certification exam. So that's my my mumble. I know I've gone a little bit quickly through this, but if there are any questions, please put them in the chat. I'm happy to answer those and like Alex said, share contact information if you do have any questions about the certifications or learning material um, offered through CertiPort. Thanks, Hannah. All right, perfect. Thank you so much, Ty. David, we'll go ahead and pass it over to you. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I hope everyone can hear me okay. Um, uh, I'm David Manning. I've been the Academy Director for Game and Sim at my school for about eight years now. And um, 
we do uh, the three user unity exams in my program. And I've also been the program assistant for my county for the game and sim curriculum, which means that I've helped develop the, the curriculum and spread it to all the teachers in my county who are offering this program. And um, implementation of unity in the classroom. Uh, I saw in the chat earlier, someone put that like they didn't have the budget for unity or uh, for VR and for 3D and things like that. And, and that that can definitely be a hurdle to cross, especially with the 3D and things like that. Um, unity does have some system requirements that are steep for a standard school equipment. Um, but one thing that we've found is um, we've had a lot of success with uh, getting the equipment we need when we are able to show uh, people what the kids are working on. Uh, we do uh, different events, like we have an event we call Game Fest, where the kids uh, compete in esports competitions and they show off the projects that they've worked on in Unity. And that builds a lot of buzz and we can fundraise um, with events like that and things like that to help supplement our budget and buy things like video cards and things like that that we need to uh, work in 3D. And as far as VR headsets and things go, um, we um, buy a couple of headsets and the kids are working in Unity. They don't need a headset the entire time they're working on VR. So we have a couple of headsets that we sort of spread around. And um, those Oculus Quest 2 headsets are relatively inexpensive and they don't are, they're not required to be directly connected to a computer all the time, which is very nice. Um, and uh, the only issue we've ever run into them is sometimes because Facebook owns Meta, you know, Facebook is Meta and, you know, they're all in the same kind of network. Um, you may run into issues with your school's network uh, blocking um, installing the drivers and things like that for those those MetaQuest headsets. So that's something you'd want to work uh, through with your IT department and make sure that they're on board with what you're planning on offering before it's, it happens. You don't want to end up buying a bunch of headsets and then find out, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot you can do. Um, uh, my district is not a wealthy district. I will tell you that... Uh, the we're a title one school we, we we don't have a whole ton of money to spend um but we do apply for grants we do fundraising um with different events um we do like esports stuff where we fundraise by kids you know paying money to, to come to certain events and things like that uh and you know we we, we do our best with what we have um but I know also, and I think Alex might be able to talk to this, I believe Unity is working on uh, a cloud solution so that you don't need as powerful hardware to uh, get going with a lot of the 3D stuff soon. Alex, is that correct? You could correct me if you know if I'm wrong or not. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, at the moment, um, it's a paid solution um, mm -hmm. for Chromebooks um, that sort of stemmed from, you know, when COVID kicked off and right. that was a big problem we were trying to solve, solve for schools who, who had to go remote, um, but obviously um, for schools as well who don't have the kind of compute power available or don't have the resources. Um, that I'll share, a, um, I'll share a link to our just in general Unity Education Solution page um, and it has those sorts of things on it as well, um, and, as well as like getting set up um, guides to kind of getting set up with free licenses and all those sorts of stuff as well. And I'll drop that in. All right. Thanks, Alex. Um, so one way I, 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 I had to sell my district on us doing Unity. I had to sell them on um, this being the path forward for to giving our students as big a leg up as we could um, in terms of being on the cutting edge and preparing them for working in the game industry or uh, even in the movie industry with uh, you know, movies like the Lego movie used Unity for filming certain scenes and things of that nature. Um, and one thing that I've done with my program is uh, I've made clear to parents, to administrators, to everyone, my program only uses tools that are actually used in industry. Um, I never have any software or tool that I use that I teach to my kids that is not an actual genuine tool used um, by people in either the video game industry or the movie industry or something along those lines. Um, and Unity is pretty prolific in, in terms of 
uh, what they, you know, what projects have been made with it. Um, I can share my screen real quick here and show you guys. This is right off of um, Unity's website. There's a lot more than what they list here that stuff that your students would recognize. But when you tell kids, for example, that they're going to be working with the engine that powers Hollow Knight or Cuphead, their eyes light up. They get so excited. And the parents are impressed. And when you tell parents, um, when they're considering having their kid join your program, that their student's going to be working in an engine that does VR, that is making these uh, 3D worlds a reality, their, their child will have the opportunity in school to build these experiences themselves and have this uh, ability to build a portfolio that they can show to future employers and to colleges and things like that, that they have learned um, C sharp uh, as a programming language and they've learned how to uh, work with the you know lighting and the 3D models and stuff in a real time environment. Um, everyone just, they're so surprised that kids can get access to this in a public school or, you know, at, at the levels they think, they think it's more of a college thing. So when their kids are learning this stuff in high school and the kids are excited, um, the parents are excited, everyone just gets on board, uh, really, uh, quickly and, um, your program starts to build reputation. When I joined the program and, and switched us into working with Unity and, and building up our program, the program had, uh, we had one class that was like 13 kids. Um, now it's grown to the point where um, we have two teachers teaching all day, just game and sim, and the classes are so packed, we have to turn kids away. We have kids that are applying to come to our school from across our county um, because they want our program specifically. They 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 want it so bad that they're willing to have their parents, you know, parents are willing to drive them, et cetera. Uh, when we do high school showcase events, our booth to show off what our kids are doing has a line going around the corner. We are extremely popular. And the game industry is such a prolific uh, industry right now. Like the game industry makes more money than the movie industry and the music industry combined by itself. The, the game industry is a huge industry right now and they are desperate for new talent. Um, and one also a great thing with teaching the kids Unity is, um, Unity is the number one software game development tool used, I've found at least. I, I'm sure, Alex, you may have numbers that back this up, but what I've seen is independent developers, uh, indie develop developers, by and large, they, they like Unity the best. Um, and so when you go to conventions with students, um, or even just by yourself as an educator to meet professionals who are working in the industry, they're using Unity. And I've had industry professionals, when they hear my students are learning Unity and learning C Sharp and they're working on it, they get excited. Like, oh, can your kids help test our game and be, work as testers for us? We'll put their names in the game and, um, you know, we'll give them free copies for helping us out and we'll do all this stuff. And the kids then hear, oh, guys, there's this new game coming out that the company wants you to play the game and test the game for them and give them feedback. Since you guys are learning Unity, you guys can give them better feedback than just, you know, putting the te beta test out there for anyone. And the kids are so proud of themselves and they get so excited. Um, it is it is amazing to watch um, how involved these kids get in this. Um, Elizabeth, I'm sorry if you feel this is a marketing uh, presentation. I, I'm just trying to talk about my experiences uh, as a teacher teaching it um, uh, at my school uh, for the last couple of years here. Um, if if anyone does have questions about implementation in the classroom, I'd be happy to help. And I've told uh, Hannah, you, you can give my information out. If anyone needs help um, either implementing this or they want curriculum help or they need help pitching this to their school or their district, uh, I'm more than happy to help. Uh, I had to work really hard to pitch teaching this to my district. And uh, once I got them on board, 
like I said, we just, we ran away with it and it's, it's been awesome for our students and for our teachers um, ever since we, we've, we've done this. And the industry certifications that the kids are doing through Certiport, um, the, I, I will say the way I implement them is we typically do the artist one in year three of my program. And then uh, we found that one to be a little easier for the kids who are just kind of getting started with Unity to do. Uh, and we start Unity around year three. So Unity artist is what we do first. And then we do programmer year four because uh, we found program to be a little harder than the artist test. And uh, we do VR after they finish the programmer test as like an add-on test right now. Um, but uh, again, Ty, you saying earlier that you guys are looking into making the program or the VR test a standalone test. Super exciting. Everyone in my district who teaches game and sim is jumping for joy at that news. Uh, they all want to see it because uh, our kids love that VR test. That's the one they're the most excited about. When you tell the kids like, hey, there's a VR test, you'll be able to tell everyone that you're certified to make games in VR. They are over the moon. Like they want that more than anything. That's the thing they want the most. Uh, VR is definitely uh, why they're coming in here. Um, and, um, yeah, uh, like I said, uh, talking to industry people, uh, talking to, um, uh, parents, unity is the thing that really gets everyone kind of excited. And, um, my program has grown leaps and bounds because of it. And Thank I'll you so much, her. David. That was very helpful. And I know we've had some activity here in the chat so i'm trying my best to scroll yeah. through let me see if i can expand this out a little bit so i can I, find I, I some of just, the questions and comments that were left as well um, can i just dive in quickly on a question yeah um, absolutely please alex go ahead I, and yeah this is mainly for elizabeth because this is the question that we get a lot um in terms of like choosing unity versions and having a stable version for the whole year it's a really a really good question and one that um new educators uh always asking um so I, I from all the expert educators that we hear from um sticking to the one version the whole year is really important don't get you know while newer versions of unity have uh, new features um you know sticking with kind of 2021 uh, long-term support or LTS um, is really good idea or even earlier than that. Um, but regardless of what it is, um, just sticking to the one version so and, and making that really clear to students so there aren't any issues with, um, with getting stuck with errors because of different versions. Um, I dropped in a little while ago a link to the educator hub on unitylearn.com. By far our most popular course to teach in terms of an introduction, if you're learning, uh, if your students are going to be coding, learning to code with Unity and learning game development is create with code, or now it's called the junior um, programmer pathway. Um, and that has, or a lot of the pathways, all the pathways that we have on Unity Learn have educator resources with them, including lesson plans, um, instructor guides in terms of getting set up, getting your classroom set up with licenses and all of those sorts of things. We've created really robust materials so that you can go from like zero to one as quickly as possible. Um, and we know how much planning um, it, it, it involves starting a new pro project so, or sorry, starting a new program. So we've created those materials specifically for educators who are like, I want to start tomorrow. I need my, I'm, I'm taking over from uh, the, the teacher who was te teaching computer science with Unity. Um, they just quit their job last week and I'm taking, taking over their class next week. That was kind of our uh, design uh, process for creating those. So um, I can, uh, Please connect as well, as Elizabeth, if you um, if you want any more advice. And also, um, uh, we have a couple of great spots for educator community, um, both the Discord server and uh, a Facebook group, which has over I think three thousand educators now. And there's heaps of like ed and educator resources that they've you know community based, user generated content um, that that's on there for. Uh, lesson plans and getting set up on all those sorts of guides as well. So I'll drop those in. Perfect. Thank you, Alex. And I know one of the other questions that came through in the chat is the cost um, of installing um, Unity for schools and educators in the classroom. So if we could talk about that a little bit as well, I think that would be helpful. It's free. Yeah. 
it's free for educators. <laughs> we love to hear that. And I'm glad that that's always the answer, right? Whenever, whenever the answer is free, I think that that's really helpful for a lot of teachers to hear. Um, Can I hit on a question I see in the chat here real quick? Yes, please. So someone asked, uh, someone said that uh, we are expanding our computer science to include gaming, AR, and VR. What does your course progression look like? So for my course progression, um, we start with um, our level ones, the most, we are a title one school. So a lot of the kids we get into my program have zero programming knowledge, zero, like some of the kids have used a cell phone maybe, and that's it. So we start them off real light. So we start by teaching them, um, we jump into like copyright law, things in year one. And then when we do get into coding, um, we use uh, a platform called Game Maker, which has its own language called GML, which is like very simplified uh, coding. And we do that for uh, the second half of the first year. Second year, we is designed for us. We focus on uh, creating game narratives, you know, character design, world design. And we have the kids use a program called RPG Maker MV, which is one where it doesn't require any coding really. They just do pseudo code to sort of build a game that's more narratively focused. Um, and then in year three, we jump into Unity Artist where we start teaching them how to use Unity and uh, we start teaching them how to import art assets, handle particles and you know physics and all that stuff. Um, and the kids certify it like the, the second half of the year in Unity Artist. Um, and then once they have those foundations in the art side down for year three, in year four, we move them into the programming side and we do Unity uh, Programmer and Unity Programmer VR. And um, we start doing C Sharp stuff in year three. Uh, with them knowing like we're not going to be testing you on the C sharp stuff, but this is stuff you're going to need to know as we go. And then we really hit hard like C sharp day one when they hit the programming class the fourth year, and we do programming all through the year and they test right at the end. Uh, we found the programming test. I know Ty said, spoke earlier to like the 150 hours being a suggestion for the programmer test. We found with the artist the 150 hours is is kind of a light suggestion. You can probably get by with less than that. With the programmer, it really is a good suggestion. That programmer test is is not a super simple one. So when you have two years of Unity under the kid's belt, if you have that time where you have multiple levels that you can put the kids through, that really helps you get a really good pass rate on that test versus just only giving them a year of experience with it and, and having that test done. You, you'll still get kids passing, but it's not as great as if you can give them that extra time. Like that extra time really is valuable um, because there's so much for the kids to be working on in Unity. Perfect. Thank you. And it, I just want to call out for those who haven't been paying attention to the chat or haven't seen these come through, Alex has been dropping some links to both his presentation from today, um, as well as some additional resources that Unity has put together um, to enable teachers who are just getting started to be able to learn how to use it themselves before they teach it in the classroom. Um, and like you said earlier, we'll be covering that in our session that's happening on Thursday as well. So if you're looking to get this started in your classroom and have a lot of questions about how you can learn yourself or different pathways that you want to cover with your students, um, our session on Thursday is a great place to start for that. And I've dropped the link into the chat so that you can register for that session as well. Um, it looks like we're pretty well wrapped up um, as far as questions go, but we'll give everyone just a, one more second um, to drop in any final questions or any final thoughts from our presenters as well. Anything else that you guys wanted to cover? Uh, last thing I think I cover is I saw someone put in the chat that it was very easy to port Unity stuff to different game consoles like Xbox and Switch. Unity is the best for that. Like porting games to different consoles like that's unity's bread and butter like they're the the absolute best at that it's so easy students when you tell them that they're going to be able to put their um games on an xbox or a switch that you you just won them for life they love you <laughs> <laughs> perfect any final thoughts alex or ty that you wanted to share as well um just a question here on what will be a bit more in depth of what we covered on thursday i'm not sure if you've got a synopsis i know what are yes we talking i'm going to drop particular? that into the chat as well yeah i'll be just doing a deep dive into all the free resources um that we've created for educators uh what's available and best ways to get started and 
some just early troubleshooting stuff. Perfect. And then we had um, another question. Do you recommend that instructors get certified? So I'll leave that one for David and for Alex to potentially. Yes, 100%. Don't try to teach it if you're not certified in it. That's a bad choice. You need to know, you need to know what your kids are going to see before you can teach it to them. Yeah. You got to. Absolutely. Yeah. And we offer free certifications for teachers. So ask your territory manager about that. You can email me as well, but um, they're free for instructors. Perfect. Okay, fabulous. Well, thank you all for your questions, for your engagement, and to our fabulous presenters for sharing their expertise with us. We'll be posting the recording a little bit later this evening. So if you wanted to get access to that before we send out our email, I will go ahead and actually just drop the link to our YouTube page where we're going to be posting that a little bit later this afternoon. Um, otherwise, you can check your inbox to look out for when we're going to be sending that through along with the links to the slides and the other resources that were shared today. Um, um, just calling out one comment that was dropped into the chat about boot camps and how teachers can get certified and get their own skills um, up and going before they teach this to their students. We're going to be rebranding and relaunching our boot camp program in the new year. Um, so keep an eye on your inbox for that. Um, yes, I did see Ty's comment about subscribing to the newsletter. So we're going to be sending that out um, starting in January with timelines for when the different boot camps for different courses are going to be happening. So please um, keep with us for the rest of the year and we'll be launching that information starting in January. Otherwise, if you wanted to reach out to us directly with questions about how to get access to demos or curriculums at Courseware, you're more than welcome to do that, um, responding to the email that will be going out later this week. So thank you so much for being with us, everyone. We hope to see a lot of you with us again on Thursday, where we'll be diving into more of those curriculum and resources. So thank you all so much and have a great rest of your afternoon.